Hi guys and welcome back to Brain Friendly Thinking. Sometimes we want to pursue a train of thought to see where it leads us. But sometimes we are rather interested in seeing various angles of a topic in quick succession. If that's what you want, here are two techniques that can help you with that. Our normal way of thinking is thinking in trains of thought. That means an original thought leads to an association which leads to a new thought with a new association and so on and so forth. These trains of thoughts can run very long but they are essentially linear. We follow them until they become too weak. However in between there are always points of divergence where we could have taken another route because usually at any one point there is more than one association bubbling up inside us. But of the many associations that we might have, we need to select one to continue thinking. And usually this happens so quickly that we are only partially aware of the other thoughts that are in our conscious mind. And if we start new, we will likely follow a different path. Following a train of thought can be a very fruitful exercise, but that's not always what we want to do. Sometimes we want to explore the other associations so that we get a better understanding of the problem or more ideas of what we can do about it. If we want to do this, we need to work with conscious interruptions. We can only follow a train of thought for so long and then something needs to change. Well, we can set ourselves limits. Either we only think about a train of thought for a certain period of time or we only think about a train of thought for a specific space we have on a page. Once we run out of either time or space, we stop and we start new. And because there are so many associations for our brain to choose from, the second time around it will most likely choose completely different associations which will lead to a different path and thus a different area of the topic. Now this in itself is already pretty good but we can do more. We can increase the probability that our brain will choose a different train of thought by one of two ways. Either we choose a different mode of thinking or we choose external stimuli which we combine with our previous train of thought. And this is where we get to our two methods. The first method was developed by Vera F. Birkenbiel and it's called Goethe Think. Goethe was a German poet, philosopher and scientist and like many great thinkers he kept a journal. Now sometimes it happened that as Goethe was reading through his old journal entries he got new ideas. So he would take a new journal and place it next to the old journal and then write whatever ideas were triggered by his old journal entry. When Vera of Birkenbiel read about this habit, this triggered a train of thought in her own mind and as a result she developed this thinking technique. This is why she called it growth to think. However, the technique itself has very little to do with what Goethe actually did. The second technique comes from a viewer of this channel, Thomas Teppel, who in a comment told me that he uses this technique very often himself. So in an analogy to Goethe think, let's call this Teppe think. To do Goethe think, you need one sheet of paper or two notebook pages next to one another. One side of the paper you separate into three equal columns. The other side you separate into two columns so that one column is twice the width of the other one. The idea behind Goethe think is that you give yourself a time limit of two to five minutes maximum per column except for the last one. You select a topic you want to think about or a problem or question and then the first column is for free associations. Words, half sentences, sentences, diagrams, whatever comes to your mind. Just get your train of thought onto paper. Once the time is up you move to the second column. This again is for free association. But rather than continuing your train of thought from the first column, you start a new train of thought. Either you select 
some of the possibilities that popped into your mind but that you could not write about because your train of thought followed another direction or you simply start completely new and see where your train of thought leads you this time. Then in the third column you continue your thoughts from the second column but this time as an ABC list. An ABC list is great for stirring up associations but it's not great to follow a train of thought. So rather than continue to think linearly, you now jump here or there wherever your associations lead you. Then the fourth column is another ABC list, this time for your first train of thought. But as you now go back to these thoughts, you might feel how these thoughts already become enriched by the thoughts you developed in your second and your third column. As you do all of this, you might notice that all your thinking revolves around a certain subtopic or a certain keyword. You can now take this and explore this further in the fifth column. Or you use the fifth column to create a summary of all your thoughts. For the fifth column, you have two options. You can create either a carver or a carga or a mixture of both. In contrast to the other columns, for the last column you can leave yourself as much time as you need. Here's an example which I did just the other day. It is in preparation for a kickoff meeting with our final year undergraduate students who are going to look at localizing touch in the hand. My first thoughts were all related to the task. How do we probe the hand? What receptors are there in the hand? What type of responses do we have? And so on. My second thoughts went into a slightly different direction because there are certain type of nerve injuries related to the hand where you can see that our ability to localize touch in the hand degrades and this is where I started off and then my mind wandered on to more general scientific principles as into how can we make sure that the pattern we see is due to the injury or just due to coincidence. Then my first ABC went back to my second thoughts and you can see words like artifact, controls, carpal tunnel syndrome, data quality, peripheral nerve repair and so on. And the second ABC goes back to my first thoughts but I didn't focus so much on the stimuli or responses but rather on a subset where I talked about the receptors. Meissner corpuscles and Merkel cells which are type of receptors. You have pathways which lead to the brain. You have data analysis in the brain, thalamus and so on and so forth. Once I'd done all of that I decided to take Logognosia as my word for the carver, Logognosia is the term that describes our ability to localize touch. And this type of carver is more of a summary of what I thought about before. You again see nerve damage patients, you have peripheral nerve repair and carpal tunnel syndrome. You have a comparison, in this case the comparison in the brain, by which the brain extracts the signal. And the question, what is normal? And this is why we need to not only test patients but also test healthy controls to see well what is the normal range anyway. What you can see down here doesn't belong to the carver directly but I, as I was doing the carver I had further ideas for how can I approach the kickoff meeting, what do I need to tell our students, in which order can I approach it and anything related to that I wrote down here. With table think you don't set yourself a time limit for your train of thoughts but a space limit. You need one side on a sheet of paper or a notebook page and you're going to separate this into several cells, for instance 9 or 16. Then again you select a topic or a problem or question you want to think about and you start writing down your associations in the first cell in form of a mind map or spider diagram. Once you run out of space you stop your train of thought and now you have two possibilities to continue. Either you take one sub-element from your first train of thought and expand this in a second cell in a new train of thought or you combine your first train of thought with an external stimulus and then start a new train of thought with whatever comes to your mind. Thomas recommends creating lists for this which you can consult over and over again. For instance problem solving principles that helped you in the past or checklists or something similar. 
and so you slowly fill your sheet, each cell with a new train of thought looking at another detail of your topic. And this example of uh, tip think is also related to our undergraduate students because we need to teach them a lot of skills so that they can carry out the experiments and analyze the data we get. And I started off simply by writing skills up here and just brainstorming different skills they need. Then on the next couple of, of squares, I took one of the skills which I had written down here. For instance, a translation question to statistical test. And I thought more about this in detail. But then I went on and combined it with other lists. For instance, for the experimental setup, I randomly chose a list related to uh, product development. And in order to select the word, I simply looked what we have under E, because experimental setup starts with, a e, with an E. And under E, I found exploration. So I decided to combine experimental setup with exploration and then wrote down whatever came to my mind and sort of develop that and see and try to think about, well, how can we teach the experimental setup, but letting the students explore the options themselves rather than just um, prescribing them to them. And so I little by little filled each square of the taper think table. If you use gothink and taper think, you will find that you can come up with surprising ideas in a short amount of time, which you can then take and you can explore further and work out in more detail with other thinking tools. As you might have noticed, gothink and taper think are not thinking tools in the same way that for instance ABC lists are. Rather, they are tools that combine several of the more simpler tools together. If you're interested in another way how you can combine simpler thinking tools together, you can watch my video on the strategy lottery right here. Or if you're interested in an overview of thinking tools you can use, you can watch the playlist right here. Otherwise, if you found the video useful, please don't forget to give the like button a high five. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And until next time, keep thinking.